Because to fight the election, UKIP felt it had to develop a range of policies across the piece. Uh, and it had a manifesto, deficit reduction, education, uh, farming policy, and all the rest of it. You think that the NATO, the, the, the UKIP strategy now will be to simply concentrate on getting Britain out and immigration because the two things play, in their view, so well together. The general election was their difficult second album. OK, they released the first one, <laughs> won the European elections in 2014. They did the difficult second album, it didn't sell as well. So now they're, they're touring again and they're just playing the hits now. And I think that's what you're going to get from Nigel Farage. All that stuff that you talked about in the general election, with the manifesto mm. put together by Suzanne Evans, which was actually very good, you know, it was a, it was a good document, it was, you know, it was coherent, it made sense whether you agreed with it or not. It's kind of forgetting all that now. Let's get back to the nuts and bolts of UKIP. What are UKIP for? Getting Britain out of the EU. What is the best example of the EU on a day-to-day -day basis in Britain? It is immigration. It's open-door borders. And that's, that's what he's going to focus on. OK, let's go back uh, to Doncaster. We can speak to BBC political correspondent Tom Barton, who joins us live from there. Tom, I know you've also got some uh, uh, people to talk to there. But before you do, tell us... Uh, uh, did he energize the hall? Was, uh, did he get them going? Did he resonate with his rank and file? It was definitely rank and file. There was a really good atmosphere in the hall, Andrew. I think as you would expect at an event like this, to say the very least. Uh, the standing room only, there had been some questions about whether the party had managed to sell as many tickets or uh, get as many people here as they did last year. Well. There certainly weren't any free seats in the hall today. Uh, he walked into the final countdown. Of course, we don't yet know what date that referendum is going to be. But I think for UKIP, this really feels like the start for them of that referendum campaign. It's, you know, of course, the thing they've worked for all their life as a party, for many of the activists, all of their political lives as well. And, you know, he was playing, of course, to his crowd here. Um, but it went down very well. You got the impression that, uh, uh, as Linton Crosby used to tell the Tories, clear the barnacles off the boat, and by that he meant concentrate on the economy, that's it. You got the impression that there was a bit of barnacle cleaning there by Mr Farage too, that he was saying, look, uh, all that matters is whether we're in and out of Europe and the big issue that that's associated with is immigration, we will talk about nothing else. Is, is that, did you get that feeling too? Yeah, I think that's absolutely a, a, a fair summary. You know, they've had a, a, an interesting year. We saw the film before Nigel Farage's speech. You know, in the build-up to that election, all of that expectation, that hope that they would win multiple seats, of course, in the end, that came to nothing despite them getting many votes. In the aftermath of the election, you know, those difficulties with Douglas Carswell, the public falling out with the senior MEP, Patrick O'Flynn. And, yes, I think you're right. Barnacle cleaning was going on. Nigel Farage very, very clear. We have one thing to do, and that is to win the referendum, and we have one way of doing that, and that really is to talk about immigration and the what UKIP say is the open borders policy that the EU has. Uh, should we have a quick word? Yes, yeah, Tom, uh, I think you let's hear what some people made of it. It'll be fascinating. Thank you, Tom. On you go. Of course, of course. So uh, with me now, we've got three young UKIP activists. You're all in your 20s. Let's first talk, first of all, to Flo. Um, so Flo, uh, you were in the hall. I was just talking a little bit about the atmosphere. What, what did you make of uh, Nigel Farage's speech? What did you make of the atmosphere in the hall? It was truly inspirational. It brought us all together, got everyone motivated, everyone was up on their feet, and we're just ready to take this campaign on now. Now, one of the things Nigel Farage said is, you know, UKIP now actually isn't my priority. I like you all very much, but I have a bigger priority now. Uh, you know, this guy's your leader. Surely this party should be his priority. As a leader, he's got many priorities that he's dealing with, and we will always follow him as long as he wants to be our leader. And we know that he will always give this 110% as he has done for the last how many years. Does it matter for the party if perhaps he takes his eye off the party ball and focuses instead on the referendum? Well, the party ball is the referendum. So in one way, he's not taking his eye off the party. This is what the party's been here for. This is the big game, and that's what we're doing. That's been uh, another activist, uh, Claire, you're from Wales. You've yes. been involved in the party for a couple of years. Just first of all, again with you, what did you make of that speech? I was really impressed with him, you know. He mentioned, obviously, the targets in Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, the London Assembly, and he's told us, you know, let's get out there and let's win this. 
it's positive, isn't it? And of course, one of the things he did actually mention in the speech was was Wales specifically. You had all that disappointment at the general election put down by many people to the electoral system. You didn't get the MPs, even though you did get the votes. Do you think in Wales you, you maybe can make an impact on the Assembly? Definitely, you know, we're not taking it for granted. We worked hard to get what we did in Wales last year, and we're going to keep building on that. I think we've got a real opportunity to take it to the Cardiff Bay establishment and show them what a real change in politics looks like. Nigel's been supportive, and we're behind him 100%, you know. Is it a worry, though, that, you know, you for you, that those assembly elections are really important, and yet in the background you've got the referendum and all of the resources and things will be going to that. No, it's a challenge, and we're looking forward to it. Look at this, the place is buzzing. We're ready for it. Bring it on. Okay, uh, our final guest here is, is Thomas, you're from Shropshire. Um, just again, the atmosphere in the hall, it was, it was full in there. It, it, was, it was a good atmosphere, wasn't it? It was a fantastic atmosphere, and uh, Nigel's really set out the plan now, and he set the, uh, the goal high for us to go out. We're going to be the ground troops. UKIP are going to be the real fight for this referendum, and I can't think of anybody better than these group of people here to uh, take this fight to the establishment. Now, one of the questions which has been raised in the build-up to this referendum campaign is whether what sort of a role Nigel Farage should play. You know, I, I don't think anybody would disagree he can be a divisive figure. I don't know, maybe you would disagree. I might, yeah. <laughs> uh, but is, he, is it right that he plays a big role in this campaign, or is that a risk? I don't think it is a risk. I think we, need, we have to have Nigel Farage, who is known as the anti-EU man. He has to be at the front of the campaign. He has to be leading the campaign. He's took us from 3% to 25% in some elections. He is the man that's took us from a standing start on the EU referendum question. And now we've got it. It would be ridiculous not to give it to anybody else. It... Uh, and he talked about uniting the party, uniting the anti-EU cause. And yet this organisation that you could have linked up with today, Leave.eu, don't have one of the biggest, most important anti-EU organisations, Business for Britain, on board. That surely doesn't show that it's a united party, does it? Well, I think you'll find over the next coming weeks that all of these other uh, Leave groups will come under one banner. We all are fighting the same cause. We've got to iron out our details. We haven't got the referendum date yet, so that's important to remember. Once we're all together, and we will do, we will work with everybody to leave the EU. It'll all come together and we'll all work in synergy. That's great, guys. Thank you very much. Like I say, the speech, Andrew, certainly went down well in the hall. I guess the important thing for Nigel Farage is working out whether it's the sort of message which will also be going down well in the country when it comes to voting for that referendum. Indeed, Tom. Thank you very much there. Tom Barton, live from the UKIP conference in Doncaster.